That name sounds like royalty. Are you royalty? Welcome to The Internet Says It's True. As you know, in this podcast, I do a deep dive into things that people are surprised to learn. This week's show is no exception. This is a weird one. A quick note about the Patreon real quick. If you're a fan of this show and you want to show it, the best way is to go over to patreon.com slash Michael Kent and join up there. You can join for as little as $1 a month, 12 bucks a year. A lot of folks spend more than that on coffee each week. So for 12 bucks a year, you can be a member and it helps me out a ton. Also, it's the only place you can get bonus episodes like the one I recently did about graham crackers and how they were invented to keep people from loving themselves too much. Uh, I've got another bonus episode that's coming out this week over on Patreon, and you can go there to see videos from the guests I have on this show, Uh, not to mention the 60 episodes of Joke Story Trick, my web show, will soon be taken down from YouTube and available exclusively to Patreon subscribers. So once again, it's patreon.com slash Michael Kent. Now let's get on to this week's story, which comes to us from my friend Andy. Hey, Michael, it's Andy Gladwin from the UK, and I just heard that in Victorian times, it was fashionable for women to walk with a limp. I think you should do an episode on that. What? It was fashionable to walk with a limp in Victorian times? Let's look this one up. (laughs) The Alexandra Limp. How strange. There are several stories that I've heard over the years that are similar to this. Here's a particularly gross one. In France, King Louis XIV reigned from 1643 until his death in 1715. He was known as the Sun King, or Louis the Great. And the guy had butt problems, specifically an anal fistula. Listen, don't Google that. Just understand it's a butt problem. And at this point in history, physicians didn't perform surgeries where they cut into people. But barbers had blades that they used to cut hair. So a barber named Charles Francois Felix created a special blade-like tool that he called the Royal Probe and used it to perform a surgery on the Sun King to cure him of his anal fistula. It was a huge success. Louis was fistula-free, and the result is that his courtiers and subjects who wanted to appear king-like tried to get the surgery too. Whether they had the ailment or not, even people who didn't get the surgery wrapped their butts in swaddles to appear as if they had. That's maybe the grossest example of a monarch becoming a trendsetter. But there are other stories. For example, Cleopatra had all of the upper class women in Rome wearing their hair in a bun in the back of their neck and wearing eyeliner. If you know the rule about men's three-button suit coats, you know, sometimes, always, never, meaning you never button the bottom button on a suit coat, that goes back to King Edward VII when he was Prince of Wales. And he was too fat to button the bottom button. That's all it was. It started a trend that exists today. So I guess it's not surprising that a trend started by a monarch had women walking irregularly. Let's go back to the guy who couldn't button the button, England's King Edward VII. His wife was Alexandra of Denmark, so she became Princess of Wales, then Queen of England. She was a beautiful woman, and she was known to be very charming and joyful. When her third child was born, she was stricken with rheumatic fever and almost died. After the birth, she had to use walking sticks to get around, and after a year, had began to walk again without the crutches, and for the rest of her life, had a permanent limp. Alexandra of Denmark had already become a trendsetter as Princess of Wales. She was a huge fashion influencer, and the women in England would copy everything she wore. She had a small scar on her neck from a childhood surgical procedure, and she often wore choker collars and jewelry high on her neck to cover the scar. English women started wearing similar style chokers, and just as they had been influenced and tried to mimic royalty before, they did so with her, even going so far as to imitate her permanent limp. And how's this for a segue? Some of you are limping through your Zoom meetings, and I have the answer that will make you look like royalty. Oh, I'm sorry, that was awful. I get asked on a weekly basis how I'm running my shows online, 
with the transitions and the backgrounds and the graphics. I want your presentations to look that way. I want you to enter your next business Zoom meeting and for people to say, whoa, this person knows what they're doing. Uh, but here's the thing. If I just told you the software that I'm using, it's not going to help much because you need to learn how to use it. It takes a long time. That's where Virtual Presenter Course comes in. We're talking about step-by-step -step instructions. They're made for non-tech savvy people and it'll help turn your presentations into a virtual broadcast studio. I'm gonna give you 20% off of your order. You just go to virtualpresentercourse.com slash 30. And if you do that, you'll get 20% off your virtual presenter course. There's also a link in the show notes. I promise you'll like what you see. It's virtualpresentercourse.com slash 30. And you too can be a world-class presenter. And this week on Joke Story Trick, tune in live to see Scam School star Brian Brushwood. He's going to share a story with us, plus you can learn magic and hear some awful jokes. Tune in Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern. You can watch on Twitch, Facebook, or YouTube. Go to jokestorytrick.com. I was having a conversation with my buddy the other day, and he was saying, you know, I need like a new jacket, like a new fleece. And I told him to go to Scotty Vest. They, they're not just vests, folks. They make jackets and blazers and pants. They even make like quarter zips and shirts and even underwear with pockets and t-shirts with pockets. The whole point is they make clothes that are functional for our modern life where we are never anywhere without our phones and our ear pods and everything else. Go to scottyvest.com to look at their catalog. It's quite extensive and it's pretty awesome. I have several pieces of Scotty Vest gear that I love and I'm going to give you 15% off of your order just for listening to this show. Go to scottyvest.com, enter promo code TELLME, T-E-L-L-M-E, -E, all one word, scottyvest.com, promo code TELLME. Let's get back to the show. Here's a quote from an 1869 edition of the North British Mail newspaper. Taking my customary walk the other day, observant of men, women, and things, I met three ladies. They were all three young, all three good-looking, and all three lame. At least such was my impression, seeing as they all carried handsome sticks and limped. But, on looking back, as everyone else did, I could discover no reason why they should do so. It was called the Alexandra Limp, and it caught on like wildfire, a faked limp that was put on by women in the upper class areas of London in order to appear more like Alexandra of Denmark. Women would walk with a pronounced limp and go so far as to use a cane they didn't need. They didn't have any ailment, they faked it. And to help them do so, they started wearing shoes of two different types, one high heel, one low. The writer in the North British Mail continued, a monstrosity has made itself visible among the female promenaders in Prince's Street. It is as painful as it is idiotic and ludicrous. Well, I agree with the North British male writer, but for shoemakers, they saw an opportunity. They began selling pairs of women's shoes with mismatched heels so that walking in them would make the wearer wobble. There is a happy ending to this story. Fads, by definition, fade away and get replaced with something else. And that's the story with the Alexandra Limp. Women of London could soon walk normal again. That is, until the next fad. As the limp went out of style for ladies of London, a popular fashion journal reported the following. The Alexandra Limp is to be discontinued forthwith. The skirt of the season, we are informed, is to cling closely round the feet. In consequence whereof, ladies will be obliged to walk as if their feet were tied together. Hey! Now it's part of the podcast where I call a friend and quiz them, and today I'm calling the host of the Tracing the Path podcast, Dan R. Morris. Dan contacted me on Twitter, and he desperately wants to tell me what to Google sticker. And if you've listened to this show, you know what that's about. So welcome to the show, Dan. Dude, I'm chilling in Nashville. It's a little bit rainy today, which makes it a perfect day for this. Yeah, that's right. I, I have so much outdoor work to do today. And I'm waiting. to. I'm doing my podcast first so that by the time I go outside, it's going to be raining. And then I don't have to do any of it. Nice. It's, it's like it's <laughs> typical procrastination. I'm, I'm really good at coming up with, with schemes and tactics to procrastinate yard work. It's like starting the laundry after dinner. 
<laughs> yeah, like, oh, you know what? I'm now I'm too tired. We'll just do it tomorrow. <laughs> well, uh, you don't know what the topic is about. And nope. uh, so the first question, you're from Nashville. You're in Nashville, Tennessee. So if you get this first question right, I will donate fifty dollars to the Nashville Food Project. If you don't get it right, I will spend that money on magic tricks. So this could be, you know, that, either way. Yeah. Well, yeah. And it's, it's, it's a good way either way, either I get to do more magic or some folks get to eat. No pressure. Yeah. What weird trend was started by Alexandra of Denmark when she was princess of Wales? Now this is multiple choice. So here are your choices. What weird trend was started by Alexandra of Denmark when she was princess of Wales? One, upper class women in London started walking with a limp. Two, people in London started talking with a fake Danish accent. Or three, British subjects began singing a song of thanks before meals. Well, this is easy. I mean, everybody knows this. It's, it's clearly B. Clearly B. People in London started talking with a fake Danish accent. Yeah, I think that this, um, I think this is common knowledge. I think that's what I think. Well, you are a good bluffer, but you are incorrect. Uh, your, your, your confidence with your answer would have led me to believe that you had done an episode on this. However, the answer is number one. Upper class women in London started walking with a limp and this is true they called it the alexandra limp she had a limp as a result of um rheum rheumatic fever and people wanted to be like her they copied her fashion trends and they started limping because of her this was an empathy play <laughs> i don't know that it was empathy as much as it was like everything you know we can appear to be royal because the royals limp I, I, it's really strange there are so many weird stories of of contagion <laughs> like this Limping nobility. Yeah, so weird. Uh, in fact, the shoemakers in that area started creating shoes with two different size heels to make it easier for the Alexandra limp. Very well, sure somebody out there that had a shorter leg was really appreciative of such a thing. They were, yeah, but then they also like, are these people mocking me? What's happening? Uh, <laughs> this is how Dr. Scholes began. <laughs> That's right. I will uh, spend money on magic tricks, but because you came on the show, I will also donate fifty dollars to the Nashville Food Project today. So you know, but the whole time we were answering that, I was trying to think of Michael Douglas's wife's name, but I never Catherine Zeta Jones. Yes. Oh, was totally gonna like infuse that into the answer to make it common knowledge, but I couldn't come up with it. <laughs> Catherine Zeta Jones did a movie. About uh, the fake Danish accent in, no, I don't know what the, your answer would have been. This but. is what I was going to say, because she's from Wales. I was like, this is going to be it. <laughs> All right. Well, question two. For this question, if you get it right, I will put an ad for your podcast in next week's episode. If you get it wrong, you have to do the same for my show. Okay. Deal? All right. So here we go. This is for, this is for I don't know, 10 seconds of airtime. <laughs> The Alexandra limp wasn't the first time in history people faked an ailment for status. Nazis were known for doing what to themselves in order to appear tougher. So this is another multiple choice. One, they cut off their pinky finger. Two, they purposely jumped in front of an automobile known as Otto Herstesten. Or three, they cut a deep scar into their face. I was going to guess C before you did the multiple choice because it seemed just seemed very German. It is. Yeah. You see, that's like the stereotypical Nazi in a movie has the scar across their face and the yeah. typical bad guy. And I or the absolutely. Or the and uh, the it reason is. that that is a trope in so many shows is because. You, Dan, are correct. They cut a deep scar into their face, and that started not only a trend within the Nazis, but in every bad guy movie ever since then. You'll always see these deep scars, and it's because Nazis used to do that. Uh, you know, they, they wanted to appear tough as if they had been in battle, and so they would have their friends, or they would do it themselves, take a knife and carve themselves. Another thing, uh, another example of stupid contagion. Maybe um, that explains why Charles Bronson always looked like that. 
Maybe. Or maybe he just had a, a scar. You know, in, in what was the second uh, Star Wars movie? Well, it was back. This, in Emperor Strikes Back in that first scene. I've read that one of the reasons that they had Luke get attacked by a was it a Tauntaun? No, it was the um, the Hoth yeah, Wampa. What, which was it? Or was the? It, it was Empire Strikes Back, and it was because he'd gotten injured. He had gotten injured in a, like a motorcycle accident or something, yeah. and had a scar around his mouth. And they 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 wanted to you know yeah. they, did, they didn't want the continuity error, so they had him get attacked early in the film in order to uh, for continuity. You know who's in that movie that you might not know? Who's that? John Ratzenberger. Cliff Clavin from Cheers. What is he in The Empire Strikes Back? Yeah. Is, is he, he played, wearing a, a mask or something? No, he plays one of the soldiers on Luke Skywalker's side. And while they're still in that snow compound, while Leia and Han are in there and they're like trying to figure out where Luke is, he actually comes up and he has a line. No right No way. Yeah. Now, does he have a mustache? No. I feel, okay, I was going to say I feel like I would recognize him. Yeah, yeah, he's a very young Cliff Clavin right there. Yeah, and that's that's well before Cheers. Uh yeah. that's that's interesting. It'd be it'd be pretty funny if he came up and said, "Uh, you know, Luke, it's uh it's a little known fact that uh those yeah. tauntauns uh make really good uh beds at night." Uh okay. So, <laughs> number 3. If you get this one right, I will give you a coveted tell me what to Google sticker. Now you tweeted to I'm me about I'm here. You, you, you tweeted to me about getting one of these stickers. It's time yeah. to possibly make your dreams come true. Okay, I'm stretching out, stretching out. And this one, uh, this is a true or false question. Around 1870, the Grecian bend was a term for another English fashion trend in which ladies would walk doubled over forward. True or false, the Grecian bend made it across the ocean and was picked up as a trend by ladies in America. I'm going to go with false because I believe the Grecian bend is what happens to your hair when you put the formula in. <laughs> like, like in Greece. Grecian like in, formula. In the movie from- Greece. Yes. The Grecian bend. Well... The answer is true. Uh, This is a real thing. The Grecian bend, they would double over forward, thrusting out their chest, bending forward the head, contracting the stomach, and elevating the hips. They'd combine this with the use of a bustle, and they would literally connect a belt from the bustle to a steel plate on the small of their back that would jut forward, forcing them to bend forward. And this was seen as high-class fashion for a time. No matter how far I stick my chest out, my tummy still is straight underneath. <laughs> I'm, I'm the same way, man. I put on 25 pounds during the pandemic. The Grecian bend is impossible for me. My Grecian bend goes backwards. It starts at the belly and then goes backwards. I would like to see a chart that just showed all the crazy things women have done over the years for these, these yeah. different reasons and i don't think any of these last that long but i mean there are things even today you know when 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 a woman wears high heels for her whole life it really does damage to her feet oh, I don't uh, think the so. the bones and everything in her feet and there might be a day that people look back at that and say why did they do this stupid thing to their feet the way that we look at you know uh in i believe it was in japan women did the foot binding to make yeah. their feet smaller um, which, I'm waiting for that day when somebody says, you got to tell me that you put food in this box and you let rays <laughs> eat it up and you thought that was safe. Yeah. Yeah. So and, I'm and waiting would, for that day. You would eat it out of plastic? <laughs> like you thought made with oil? Rays. <laughs> <laughs> Someday people are going to be like, how, how could you ever have thought that was safe? I wonder if. You know, in a in the not too distant future, you know, right now microwaves are just standard in homes. I wonder if those will be replaced with like air fryers, things that are safe. Yeah, you can almost do the exact same thing with an air fryer that you can with a microwave. Just about. The only thing you can't air fryer. I'm not exactly sure I know what it is. It's so we have one. I use it all the time, and I'm also not exactly sure what it is. Uh, It is (laughs) it, it it anything that you can do in a frying pan. 
You can also do it in an air fryer, and it's healthier because you don't have to cook it in oil. It huh. sort of superheats the air around it using the particles of oil that are either in the food or you can put like a l- tiny little bit of oil in there. And it's great. Like there are so many things that an air fryer is great for, but the best is reheats. Like if you have leftover French fries yeah. or, or even frozen French fries, oh my God, they're amazing in an air fryer. They get crisp. Anything you would make in a microwave, make in the air fryer and it's not soggy. That's basically how I describe it. I happen to be a toaster oven purist myself. My wife is too, and I am not. I grew up with a standard what? toaster. She grew up with a toaster oven, so we have both. And Who's she is. Her? She was like, why aren't you using the toaster oven? And I just don't, I didn't grow up with it, so I don't get it. And she is, uh, she's big on that. It's like a mini oven. It is. It Nothing is. Nothing gets soggy like in the microwave. It's just a mini oven. It is, yeah. As long as you don't leave your cheese Danish in there and burn down Dunder Mifflin, you're good. Uh, for this question, this is question number four. If you get it wrong, you have to work in a phrase of my choice in your next podcast. If you get it right, I have to work in that same phrase in my next podcast. And here's the phrase. The phrase will be, quote, think again, Tony Danza. So if you get this question wrong, your next podcast has to have the words, quote, think again, Tony Danza, end quote, in there somewhere. I'm writing that down. Think again, Tony Danza. And I'll do it if, if you get the question right. Because none of these questions, honestly, like unless you had done an episode on the, the Alexandra Limp and Princess Alexandra of Denmark, you wouldn't know any of these. These are all things that I had to look up. I like to use the quiz to provide additional information that wasn't in the episode. So I, I, as Princess of Wales, as yes. Princess of Wales, Alexandra of Denmark often visited people in hospitals. One of these people was quite notable. Which one of these famous people did Alexandra meet? A. Joseph Merrick, the Elephant Man. B. A young Winston Churchill. Or C. Charles Darwin. Tell me again the year of... uh... The late 1860s. So I believe that Darwin's Origin of Species was published in 1859. Okay. And I also believe... The Charles Darwin, after he returned from his trip around the world where he made all of his notes, that he, he was sick upon his return. It took some time for him to get better, at which time he was actually in a hospital. Winston Churchill, Winston Churchill also had some health problems as a youth. The elephant man seems like he'd be too big for a hospital. So I'm going to go with Charles Darwin based on the year alone. I'm sorry, but you will have to think again, Tony Danza, uh, Ah. because the answer is Joseph Merrick, the elephant man. Yeah, the elephant man was one of the people that that uh, Alexandra of Denmark, when she was Princess of Wales, met in the hospital. And apparently this was notable because he was quite notable. You know, they made a movie about him later uh, in history. And uh, yeah, so. <laughs> Didn't, wasn't Michael Jackson accused of wanting to buy the bones of the elephant man? Yes. And I believe the rumor was that he had bought them. But I don't think that that's true. Um, no, I know no. that they're in his famous Leave Me Alone music video. He parodies yes. all of those rumors those about things. him. And I think that's one of the things in that video is, is the elephant man. And I believe Tony Danza is now a teacher in New York. Are you Drama kidding? Or an English teacher. No, he's just a teacher. Not only is that amazing, but it's also, uh, that would be a great sitcom. Yeah. I think that he, he tried out for a show recently, having to, he had to leave school and I get a, like a permanent sub for a period of time. And I don't, I don't think the show worked out, but he is a, that's a awesome. Teacher. Wow. Now, next well, week, my show is going to be about six degrees of Kevin Bacon. So, oh, I'm sure that I can. Maybe you can look up the the how many degrees Tony Danza has to Kevin yes. Bacon. Yes. And then that work in that phrase quite easily. It's very possible. I looked up after I was on Penn and Teller, I became uh, I was within the seven degrees of Kevin Bacon. I think I am five, four or five away nice. because being on a TV show with Penn Teller oh, and yeah. Allison Hannigan, 
they've all done enough work. Yeah, you know, yeah. Penn and Teller have done a few movies, and Allison Hannigan's done a few movies, and between them, it's it's quite quite easy to get to Kevin Bacon within a few steps. Yeah, yeah. I would think you more like three. Yeah, I, I have to look it up. I, I know that I after the show, someone said, "Hey, you are uh, you are only X amount of steps from Kevin Bacon now." So oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. I am two. What's that? I am two away from Kevin Bacon. You're two, and and how what what gets you two away from Kevin Bacon? Well, the reason that I'm doing the episode on Six Degrees is because I uh, am friends with Brian Turtle, who created the Six Degrees of Sir Kevin Bacon. Game. Oh wow! And he met Kevin Bacon at Comic Con. Okay, so you go you to Brian, Brian to Kevin. Yeah, done. Well, that's fantastic. Yeah. Now, how how specific does the game have to be? Like, if you ate at a restaurant and sit at the table that Kevin Bacon sat at, are you one degree? Is that still two degrees? Is the table that'd count? Be, yeah, that'd be borderline. I mean, I yeah. wouldn't count that. Yeah, I need to talk to your I, friend and find out what the rules are on this. Yeah, uh, I would be like, that's no dubious okay question five this one is for all the marbles if you get this wrong i am banning you from the show never to be asked on again i love playing marbles if if you if you so and if you get it right i'm happy to have you back anytime what are you looking forward to this summer this is a tough one a b or c i'm gonna have to go with b michael kent I'm looking forward to hiking with the kids. That is a correct answer. Uh, where do you all go hiking? So I've lived a lot of places, like 17 states, a few countries. Wow. So, so my goal this summer with the kids is I'm going to take them to Cumberland, Cumberland something state park because okay. it happens to fall in the dark sky ordinance. So we're going to go at night because I want my kids to see the stars. Wow. You know, in the, sun, in the city, yeah. in suburbia, you see some stars. Yeah. But I want to take them to a place where they can see all the stars. And <laughs> this just happens to have a valley that is shrouded. In, like, it's totally black at night. So you can see the Milky Way and everything. And, and then oh. they haven't seen that before. So That's I saw it when I lived in Romania. And we were deep in the mountains one night camping. And I looked up and I was like, holy mackerel. What's insane. That? Well, Dan, it has been so awesome to have you on the podcast. Tell people where they can find your podcast. We are at Tracing the Path and um, Tracing the Path dot. I'm sure you could go to dot com, but dot Libsyn dot com is the uh, official host. Sure. Um, but yeah, we, every month we tell stories you don't know about things you thought you did. Ooh. Like the very first episode, um, we told the story of how Apple became a giant company how did it tip from being a small company to a giant company and the answer to that question lies with a small company in minnesota that created a little game called the oregon trail Ooh, yeah. we were talking about the oregon trail the other day because my wife is about to go out on this this two-week journey out west and she'll nice. be going to many of those places that that i saw on the old apple 2e when i was in the fifth grade Excellent. Uh, so yeah it's it's going to be quite exciting Awesome. Well, go to tracingthepath.com or tracingthepath.libsync.com and uh, check his podcast out because I have a feeling if you listen to the podcast, you will really enjoy his podcast uh, because we're both teaching you something. We're both telling you stuff, uh, stories that you didn't know or things you thought you knew. Well, it was a pleasure having you on, man. I hope that you have a fantastic week. Hey, thanks for having me again. Thank again, Tony Danza. That is all for this week. Thanks to Andy for the show topic and Dan Morris for being a guest. Go hit the Patreon if you want to see the video unedited of Dan's guest quiz or to hear bonus episodes. I'll be putting a new bonus episode up this week. Also, if you learned something that you didn't already know from my show, please go over to iTunes, leave a review with five stars and a few words. That's the rule. You got to do it. That helps me a ton because that's how the algorithm works to get the podcast suggested to more people. And that way we can keep learning something new if the internet says it's true. The internet says it's true. would like to thank the Patreon subscribers whose monthly contributions put them at producer status. Sean Brown, Catherine Morgan, Taylor Hurt, Tony Ford, Bryce Swanson, Mitch Joseph Kimplin, Andrew Joseph Kimplin, Alan Sokolik, Eugene Anderson, Matt McVeigh, Joanne Martin, Jim Martin. 
The show is written and produced by me, Michael Kent. The theme song is by Finite Music Forge, and additional music this week was from Cooper Canal. All audio clips in this episode are used for education and commentary and used under Fair Use Title 17 U.S.C. Section 107. You can listen to past episodes by searching for The Internet Says It's True wherever you get your podcasts, and you can see bonus content at patreon.com slash Michael Kent. 